So it's the last Sunday of January po, no? Ang bilis, matatapos na yung unang buwan ng 2023. And also, today, it's the concluding Sunday of our faith series. So yung mga usapang pananampalataya, ngayong araw po, ikoconclude natin. So but before I start, meron po akong ifa-flash dito. Let me start with this line. Pakibasa po nang sabay-sabay. One, two, three. Sabihin mo sa katabi mo, mahirap ang buhay. <laughs> Tama po ba? Sabi nung iba, e, parang hindi naman. <laughs> Sana all, no? Ay, faith sermon po ito. Bakit life can be hard? Bakit hirap ng buhay ang pag-uusapan natin? Alam niyo po, the reality is, life can be easy, but life can also be hard. Tama? Minsan, Samji, minsan itlog lang. <laughs> Pero yung iba, araw-araw daw, Samji. Hello, SGPT? <laughs> Cholesterol? <laughs> Sometimes, we're floating in the air, and oftentimes, our face are on the ground. Minsan, para kang nasa alapaap. Pero minsan, sayad. Sagad na sagad yung mukha mo sa lupa. We do not always get what we want. Tama ba? Di na din nakukuha lahat ng gusto natin. Things oftentimes don't go according to plan. Napakapulido ng plano mo, pero hindi naman yun ang nangyayari. People get sick, relationships change, nauubos ang pera. <laughs> are we getting it? There are pains, rejections, frustrations, despair, disappointments, losses, sometimes loss of a loved one, loss of opportunity, and so on and so forth. Tama ba? Paki-check yung katabi mo, mukhang, oy, hindi naman problema to. Oo, okay naman, no? Hindi po yung iba magaling lang na artista. <laughs> Marunong lang magdala. Amen. Tingnan mo 'yung nasa likod mo, mukhang malaki rin yung dala. <laughs> Chok lang po. <laughs> Charot lang 'yan. So, ngayon pag-uusapan natin our kind of faith in these challenging times. Ano ba nga ba yung uri ng pananampalataya natin sa mga ganitong pagkakataon? Sa buhay natin, lalo na ng buhay ng isang kristyano. Amen. So let me read James chapter 1 verses 1 to 4. Sabi niya, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations, greetings. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Ang nagsulat po ng libro ng James ay si James. So, i-describe ko po siya sa inyo. He was the half-brother of Jesus, the brother of Jude, and he led the church in Jerusalem. Si James po nagsimula ang kanyang ministry after he received a special resurrection appearance of Jesus. Prior to that, walang masyadong accounts about his ministry. He was a man of prayer. Alam niyo po yung tuhod ni James, parang tuhod ng camel dahil laging nakaluhod sa panalangin. So nangapal na po yung kalyo niya. And he was martyred in Jerusalem. Tinulak siya from a high point building, temple. Tapos nung bumagsak siya, pinagbubugbog pa siya. And he even prayed for his attackers before his death. Pero ang pinaka-notable kay James, hindi niya pinakala, uy kapatid ako ni Jesus, si James to. Hindi siya ganon. Hindi niya sinabing, si James to, yung ex mo? <laughs> Hindi rin po ganon. Sabi niya, James, the servant of the living God. He accounted himself as a servant. Hindi siya kumuha ng entitlement dun sa pagiging kapatid ni Jesus. Kanino niya sinulat yung libro ng James? The book of James was written to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations, to the Christian Jews. Sinulatan niya ang mga God's own people na during that time, kalat-kalat, hiwa-hiwalay. Can you imagine how hard it was for them? Mga kapamilya mo, ka ka kamananampalataya mo, kalahi mo, nagkakahiwalay kayo. You were dispersed. Bakit? Due to persecution. They were persecuted. Yung iba, nangahuli, No, nakakulong, kaya nagkandahiwahiwalay na. Yung iba, dahil may mga kingdom wars, nagtatago for their safety. So kung saan-saan na napunta, yung iba, they were dispersed in mercy. So imagine the torment na magkakahiwalay kayong magkakanasyon, magkakalahi. 
And also, let us remember no, na in the end times, magkakaroon ng gathering among the children of God to Christ their head. So, that's the end time. So, si James Wong nagsulat at sinulat niya para sa mga Christian Jews, to God's own people. Ngayon, ano ang sabi niya dun sa libro niya, dahil dun sa sulat niya? In James chapter 1, as James have, had written, mababasa natin, realities of life. Yung mga katotohanan sa buhay, hindi lang ng isang ordinaryong tao, pero ng isang kristyano. At yung unang katotohanan that sometimes is so hard to swallow is that trials are guaranteed. Let me repeat, trials are guaranteed. Mas sigurado pang darating ang trial kaya sa pag-ibig ng jowa mo. <laughs> They're guaranteed. James regarded trials as inevitable, hindi maiiwasan. Inescapable, hindi matatakasan. Guaranteed, sigurado. Pero yung katabi mo mukhang hindi naman naman problema yan. No? Anong sekreto? <laughs> Ang fresh eh, no? Oh. Parang fresh na ubas o mukhang pasas. <laughs> Ay, ganun po, sigurado yung trials, yes. Sabi ni James, kung hindi ka pa kumbinsido, even Jesus said that. Jesus never hid that fact. He said it straight in John 16.33. I have told you all these things so in me you may have peace. Ang sabi sa mga disciples niya. Here on earth, wala naman po tayo sa Mars, no? <laughs> Here on earth, you will have trials and sorrows. Ang sabi niya. But take heart. Sabi niya, I have overcome the world. Ang sabi ni James, whenever you face trials, whenever, he said when, not if. It's not a conditional statement. It's a reality. So, trials indeed are guaranteed. Pero alam niyo na stress sa mga trials? Trials, troubles, problems, challenges, suffering, sorrow. Dumadating sila ng walang pasabi. Tama ba? Trials are not planned. Hindi naman sasabihin ng Diyos na, Uy, Peya, anong schedule mo? May gusto akong pagdaanan mong pagsubok sa buhay kasi may gusto akong i-develop sa'yo eh. Kailan ka kaya pwede? Kailan sila pwede dumating? Pwede bang paratingin ko ng lunes? Ay, hindi. Practice mo ng sayawi. Huwag lunes. Martes! Ay, hindi. Life group natin yun. Hindi pwede ng Martes. Miyerkules. Ay, protege yun. Hindi pwede dumating yung problema ng Miyerkules. Webis kaya? Ay, free kang Wednesday, no? After school? O, oh, hintayin mo, ah. <laughs> Ganun ba? No. That's what makes them a problem. We do not expect them. They seem so random, unpredictable. Kabut na lang mo susulput. Basta na lang nanjan, dama ba? Meron ba dito? Huh, ready na yung bahay ko para sa problema. May ganun ba? Ready na yung wallet ko para sa mga bayarin. Wow! Sana all, no? Pero hindi po eh. So yun yung nakaka frustrate sa trials. They do not fit our schedules. They are so inconvenient. Bakit? Naninira. Eh, ito, ito, ito budget ko to para dito. Bigla, nagkasakit yung anak mo. Yung pambili mo ng bigas, pinambili ng gamot. Inconvenient na. Wala na, sira na yung, yung plano mo. So, ganun sila, kaya nas, mas nakaka-stress. Pwede mong sabihin sa akin na, okay, sige, sigurado yung trials. Basta mga problemang budget lang, mga problemang pera lang, o sige, kayang solusyonan. Sanay naman na ako kung problema ang pera. Okay lang, sige, sigurado sila. Ang mahirap, hindi lang basta ganon. Pangalawang reality that we have to remember, trials are diverse. Iba-iba sila. Hindi lang quiz ang pinoproblema mo. Hindi lang project. Hindi lang pambayad kay Pelko. Hindi lang ganon eh. They come in all shapes, in all sizes, in variety. They come in different versions. They come in different seasons. Some cause major inconveniences. Some minor lang. Pero yung iba, crisis. Diba? Ay, mana himig lang po yata rin problema. <laughs> Joke lang po, no? Ang sabi ni James, whenever you face trials of many kinds, 
Many na. Kinds pa. May S pa. Minsan, one week, wala. Okay lang. Pero minsan, grabe, iba-iba na nga sila. Sabay-sabay pa sila dumarating. Kaya <laughs> ka ma-stress. Kakasakit yung anak mo. Biglang nawalang trabaho yung asawa mo. Biglang darating si Bill ni Kuryente, Bill ni Tubig. Huwag na lang kaya kaya tayong mag-tubig. <laughs> ganun ka pa, no? They are diverse. Trials may be diverse, yes. But they are not strange. Ang sabi sa 1 Peter 4.12, Don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through as if something strange were happening to you. Iba-iba man sila, pero hindi sila nakapagtataka. Kaya wag tayong surprise as if strange sila. Okay, sure po yung trials. Okay, iba-iba sila. Pero praise God, born again to. Na kay Lord ako. Exempted. May immunity bracelet. Sabihin mo nga sa katabi mo, hindi ito Survivor Philippines. Wala kang immunity bracelet. Yes. Pwede. Born again ka, Krisyano ka, na kay Lord ka, but you are not exempted. Ang sabi ni James, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Kanino niya sinabi? Yes. Sa mga kapwa niya nasa Panginoon. Sa mga kapatid niya sa pananampalataya. Sa mga sarili niyang kalahi. Listen, if God's own people are liable to persecution, to being scattered, to troubles, what more tayo? What make us think that we're exempted from experiencing such troubles on earth? Amen. Those are God's own people. Pero nakaranas ng kapagsubukan. Tayo pa kaya? Alam niyo po in Romans 8, Paul made it clear, no? Sinabi ni Paul doon sa Romans 8, especially in verse 22, We know that the whole creation, whole creation, lahat ng nilalang, has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth up to the present time. This passage does not dismiss or ignore human sufferings because they are real. Pain, problems, these are real. Huh? These are all part of our life. Even if you think you are that best Christian, even if you think you have the right to think well of yourself, hindi dapat po akong lingkod ng Diyos. So exempted ako, hindi dapat ako nahihirapan. Ay, matindi ko pong lingkod ng Gino, matindi ako naglilingkod. So hindi dapat to, hinahayaan ng Diyos na maranasan ko yung mga bagay nito. Hindi po. We are part of that whole creation. And we will also groan in pain. On the other hand, minsan, no? Naiisip natin na, ay, trials are for all. So, ibig sabihin, hindi lang ako ang problema, Tama ba? Minsan po kasi, no? Oy, Ako lang ang nakakaawa dito. Ako lang ang may malaking problema. Wala kang karapatang sawihin sa akin na, ay, ba't ko naman nahihirapan? Ba naman ganyan? Minsan iniisip natin yung iba walang pinagdadaanan sa buhay. And then, we argue like, paano mo ako maintindihan? Hindi ka naman nahihirapan na tulad ko. Ay, hindi po natin masasabi yun. Amen. Sabi ko na sa inyo, yung iba pang Hollywood ang aktingan. <laughs> Ganon katindi. Kapatid, trials are for all. Imagine, eh, ordinaryong tao, kristyano, lahat tayo nasisinaga ng araw, lahat tayo nauulanan. Tama ba? And even in the storms, even speaking about storms, every one of us nakakadanas po ng ganito. So wag nating iisipin na, hindi mo ako maintindihan kasi hindi mo pinagdadaanan na pinagdadaanan ko. Kaya po ako, believe na believe ako sa mga lingkod ng Panginoon na matapat, na committed, despite na alam ko yung nangyayari sa buhay nila. Yung iba, hindi man natin alam yung mga kwento nila, pero pag nakikita mo yung katapatan, saan maiisip mo na lang, nakakabless tong kapatid na to? 
we do not even know what this person has to go through behind closed doors. Pero makikita mo, nakangiti. Makikita mo, masigasig na naglilingkod sa Panginoon. Amen? Kaya nga, huwag natin iisipin na tayo lang, itamo mo makalunos. Ikaw na lang ang pinagtakloban ng langit at lupa. <laughs> Lahat po tayo, iba-ibang version nga lang. Amen. You know what? Trials are specially beneficial to Christians. More than anyone on this planet, mas beneficial ang trial sa mga Kristiyano. You know why? Because trials test our faith. Ang sabi ng verse 3, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Testing of your faith. Trials prove the authenticity of your faith. Madaling sabihin sa bibig, nananampalataya ka sa Diyos. Pero pagdating ng pagsubok, pagdating ng ulo sa buhay, tignan natin. Verse 3 says that our faith is tested, not produced. Tested is from the word dokimion, meaning testing of strength or authenticity of something. To prove na authentic, legit check ng pananampalataya. Trials ang gagamitin ng Diyos. We notice that it is faith, not strength, not resources, ang tinetest. Pananampalataya ang tinetest. Alam niyo po ba that only precious things are the ones tested? Gold. Padaanin mo ng apoy. Hanggang dagdagan may baga, kahit palakihin mo yung apoy niyan, ginto pa rin. Nothing happens to the gold. It just becomes more precious. Diamond. Padaanin mo ng pressure. Mas lalong kumikinang. You know what? Our faith is also as precious. Ang sabi nga ni Charles Spurgeon, faith is as vital to salvation as heart is vital to the body. Bakit napaka-vital ng faith? Because una, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Pangalawa, we have been saved by grace through Faith. Faith is the currency of every Christian. Amen. Hindi peso, hindi dollar. So, magsisisig pa rin ako kahit mahal ang sibuyas. <laughs> Kasi faith ang currency ko. Are we getting it? Kapatid, kung yung katawan, pag walang puso, patay. Ang kristyano, pag walang pananampalataya, patay din. Because we need faith. How can we ever please God without faith? Napaka-vital, napaka-importante ng faith. It is so important that our faith is tested and proven. Tested, tapos proven. Bakit? Because that's the only time it can produce perseverance. The testing of your faith produces perseverance. No form of perseverance will be produced unless your faith is tested. Kaya ang sabi ko dyan, tested faith produces perseverance. Hindi faith produces perseverance. No, it has to be tested. Parang yung katabi mo, subok na ng panahon at pagkakataon. Tibay niyan. Siguhin mo nga. <laughs> you know what? The more we're stretched, the more we grow. Tama? You will not enlarge unless you're stretched. The more we suffer, the more our spiritual stamina develops. The more we're tested, the more our faith is being strengthened. When faith is tested, it produces patient endurance. At alam niyo po ba kapag natapos ang trabaho ni Perseverance, when Perseverance finish its work, when we have stood the test, we will be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Perseverance causes us to be mature and complete. Ang sabi ng verse 4. Now, I want you to watch this video. A very short lang po.
from frying to salad dressing, olive oil is an essential in any modern kitchen. A wide variety of grades and flavours are available, but they all have one thing in common. No, it's not the green bottle it often comes in, but the olives themselves. The process begins at harvest. The traditional method involves collecting olives using tiny rakes, but it's not very efficient. For a big crop like the one on this farm, an automated harvester is used instead. The machine surrounds each tree and literally shakes the olives off the branches. The fresh fruit is collected into a waiting hopper along with some leaves and twigs, but these can easily be removed later. When the harvest reaches the production plant, the fruit is washed to remove any dirt, leaves or twigs that were caught up in the collection process. The more stubborn twigs and branches that remain are filtered out using a grill which only allows the fruit to pass through. To get the best quality oil, the fruit should be pressed as soon as possible. Traditional methods mean there's a delay between harvesting and the grinding process. The original method also uses big millstones like these granite wheels to grind both fruit and the stones into a thick pulp. It's time to extract the oil. In the traditional system, the pulp is layered between hemp mats. Each quantity of pulp is followed by another mat and so on until the alternate layers look like a stack of giant pancakes. The stack is placed in a hydraulic press, which literally squeezes the oils from the pulp. It's collected below and has the traditional cloudy golden color associated with good quality olive oil. that oil will not come out unless it underwent the entire process from harvesting to cleaning to grinding to pressing to squeezing even the stubborn twigs and leaves tinatanggal pero naman nung na-endure yung buong process anong lumabas oil overflowing let us read this slide victory success and overflow can only be achieved when we persevere in faith. Kapatid, in verse 4, let perseverance finish its work that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And when you are not lacking anything, ibig sabihin, may overflow sa buhay mo. Kaso kailan siya darating? When perseverance finish its work. Kaya nga may dalawang bagay ang hindi mo pwedeng gawin. Number one, doubt. Number two, quit. Kapatid, doubt not. Ang sabi ng James in the same chapter in verses 6 to 8, But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts, it's like the waves of the sea being blown and tossed by the wind. Ang tao daw na punong-puno ng duda. Parang alon sa dagat, tung sa, saan tangayin ng hangin, doon na lang. Do not expect to get anything from the Lord if you are full of doubt. Because such person is double-minded and unstable in all his ways. So doubt not. Pwedeng pagdudahan mo yung mga tao sa paligid mo, pagdudahan mo yung sarili mo, pero wag ang Diyos. Amen. Pangalawa, quit not. In verse 12, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. Blessed. Sino? Yung nagpe-persevere under trial. Why? Because having stood the test, let me repeat, having stood the test, that's the only time that you will receive your reward if you have stood the test. That person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love Him. Persevere, kapatid. Sabihin mo sa katabi mo, persevere. Patiently endure. So we will become mature and complete 
lacking nothing. Amen. And the last point in number seven, trials can be considered pure joy. Now I understand. Una di ko gets. Kung kung textmate ko lang si James o kacat, James, bakit mo naman sa sabi ng consider it pure joy? Tapos biglang trials naman palas sa sabihin mo. Now I understand why James had to start with an encouragement to consider it pure joy. Because James saw the whole picture. From beginning up to the end process. Hindi lang siya nakatingin sa ngayon. Ang sabi nga ng isang guwapong preacher kahapon, ay, hindi ko nag-agree. Sabi niya, pag tinitignan mo yung process, talagang masakit. Pero tignan mo yung product. Yung olive, nakita niya yung process sa kanya. Kapatid, kung hindi ka ma-squeeze, hindi na malalabas yung galing mo. Hindi ka naman didiskarte. Hindi ka matututo sa buhay. Amen. Baka hanggang ngayon marupok ka kung hindi ka nasusubok ng panahon. Baka hanggang ngayon mababaw ka. Panggatong lang yan ng buhay. Grabe yung ginto. Kahit paanong paalabin yung apoy, it just becomes more precious. Trials are opportunities for pure joy. Pero ang tanong, it's up to you. Will you consider them opportunities for pure joy or for despair? Will you allow them to make you better or bitter? Will you allow them to make you or break you? Nasa sa'yo, kapatid. It's up to you. It's your choice. Oftentimes, nasasabihin nila sa social media, oh, toxic positivity. Magsaya daw kahit ganito, ganyan. Can we consider James' statements toxic positivity? No. Was he invalidating our trials and sufferings? Hindi rin. In fact, James was acknowledging that there are really hardships in life. But he also encourages us to see the beauty behind these hardships if we persevere in faith. Alam niyo yung Romans chapter 8 na sinulat ni Paul? Ang ganda nun na sinasabi niya, lahat tayo kabakagi sa groanings ng mundong to. Ina-acknowledge niya, hindi niya dini-dismiss ang human sufferings, but at the same time, at the end, dun yung paboritong verse ng lahat, that all things work together for good to those who love Him and to those who are called according to His purpose. Ina-acknowledge niya yung reality ng buhay, but at the same time, ina-acknowledge niya yung security natin sa Panginoon Despite these hardships, that even the worst of things can work for our own good. Amen. Hallelujah. Now let me conclude with this story in the Bible. One day, Jesus and his disciples, no, nag ministry work, nag share sa crowd. So na pagod si Jesus during that time. Of course, he was 100% man and 100% God. No ministry niya sa earth. So magay sila ng boat. They will cross the other side of the lake. Along the 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 trip, habang nasa gitna sila na lawa, biglang may dumating na fierce storm, according to the Bible. So it must be that fierce. Is it must be that strong? Because the yung tubig pumasok sa bangka. Nataranta jan yung mga disciples. Siyempre, feeling mo, pag Christiano ka, ay nagministry ako today. Daglin ko daw kay Lord, so. Smooth flowing lang after. Pero hindi. They met a storm. Sa gitna ng lawa. Tapos, sabi nila, sa taranta nila, sa panik nila, sa takot nila, ginising na si Jesus. Sabi nila, Teacher, do you not care that we're drowning? Ah, tapang nito ha. Ganun yung tanong. Do you not care that we're drowning? Yun yung sabi nila kay Jesus nung ginising siya. Oftentimes, ganyan tayo. Yan yung argument natin kay Lord. Lord, do you not care? In times of troubles, in times of storms, na feeling natin, tahimik si Lord? Hindi pa sinasagot yung panalangin natin na matagal na? Yan ang argument natin. Lord, do you not care? Are you not aware? Ang mahirap, minsan iniisip pa natin, baka tulog ang Diyos. Kapatid, hindi. 
In Psalms, it is written that the one who watches Israel does not sleep nor slumber. Announcement, hindi natutulog ang Diyos. Jesus' body may be sleeping during that time, but His deity never sleeps. Hindi natutulog ang pagka-Diyos ng Diyos. Amen. Alam niyo ano pang tanong ng mga disciples? Do you not care? Alam niyo po ba, in Lamentations, it's written that God does not take pleasure in seeing us in pain. Hindi siya natutuwa seeing us in grief. So yung argument ng mga disciples, that's not true. Because really, He cares. Alam niyo po anong respond ni Jesus? He did not defend, de- defend Himself. And na sinabi kagising na, Uy, hindi, alam niyo ba mahal ko kayo? Uy, hindi, alam niyo ba na may pakialam ako sa inyo? Hindi. Hindi niya ninegate yung mga accusations sa kanya. Anong ginawa ni Jesus? He let the disciples see what Jesus saw. Anong sagot ni Jesus? Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? Ba't kayo takot na takot? Ba't yung mga puso nyo, pulong-puno ng takot, nasa ng pananampalatayan nyo? The reality of life, mahirap. Trials will come whether we like it or not, whether we're prepared or not. The reality of God, He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all things we ask or think. He does not take pleasure in seeing us in pain. Alam niyo ba, pinakalma ni Jesus yung dagat, yung hangin, ang sabi ng mga disciples, Who is this man that even the winds and the waves obey Him? Ganon siya kakapangyarihan. Mahirap ang buhay, oo, pero ang Diyos makapangyarihan at ang Diyos mahal tayo at may pakialam sa atin. So what's the problem? Our lack of faith in who He is. Imagine the disciples saw the miracles Jesus done. Kaya bede, Jesus was with them inside the same boat. Ganon din tayo, Lord you are with me. God is with us. We call Him our Emmanuel. But when storms get rough, lumalabas kung may pananampalataya ba talaga tayo o wala. Madaling sabihin may faith tayo when things are fine, when things are going well. But let me tell you that storms one day will expose if your faith is authentic. Nung nagkakwentuhan kami with this passage, nung kasama ko sila, Brother Jetro, sila Pea, sila Alayna, We were talking about this passage in Mark. Sabi ni Jetro, Alam niyo po, no? Bakit kaya yung storm dumating nung nakalayag na sila sa tubig? Nung nasa gitna sila ng lawa? But di siya dumating nung nasa lupa pa sila. You know what? One day, there will really come a time in your life that you will be in that situation that you will have no other person to call but God alone. Nung, kung nasa lupa sila, makakasilong yun. Makakahanap ng puno, makakahanap ng bahay, makakapagtago. One day, you will be confronted with that situation that you cannot depend on your husband. You cannot depend on your child who is the breadwinner. You cannot depend on your job. You cannot depend on, on the government. One day, you'll be confronted that you will have no other choice other than trust and call out unto God. That's the very time our faith will be exposed if it's authentic or not. Amen. Hanggat may pinagsasandalan tayo, hanggat atin tamang paniwalan, pagtiwalan, dito sa mundong ibabaw, it's very hard for us to shift our faith from a person from an opportunity, from a source, to the ultimate source. Kaya nga, hindi makoconfront ka. Na wala kang ibang choice, kundi tawagin ng Diyos. Kaya wala man tayong karapatang magmalakit, magmayabang, na may nahuhugot, nasasandalan, napupuntahan tayo ngayon. One day, our only choice will be just God. Pero kailangan mo bang mamili? Kaya kapatid, ngayon pa lang, Put your faith in God. I'm telling you. Not even to yourself, but to God alone.
Alam niyo po, God is too big, too powerful, too mighty not to make things happen according to our faith. Masyado siyang tapat. Para hindi hayaang mangyari ang mga bagay-bagay na declare natin ng may pananampalataya. Alam niyo nga po, yung mga tao may pananampalataya, <laughs> akala ng iba, people outside think we're crazy or delusional. Tignan nyo, si Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Ayaw sumamba sa Diyos, Diyos ang ginawa ni Nebuchadnezzar, ipapatapon sa pugon ng apoy. Ano sabi nung tatlo? Our God will save us. At kahit hindi niya kami iligtas, hindi kami sasamba dyan. Iisa lang ang Diyos na sinasamba namin. Iisang Diyos lang ang pinanampalatayanan namin. Sa so, tingin niyo yung mga tao sa paligid nila, hindi ba nasisira ulo niyo? Iba barbecue kayo? Nananampalataya pa rin kayo sa Diyos niyo? Could be. Si Daniel, bawal magpray, nagpray pa din. Pinili pa rin yung pananampalataya niya sa Diyos kahit inilagay sa kulungan kasama ng mga leyon. Si Paul, nung nasa kulungan, suffering, no? Nasa kulungan eh. But he sang hymns and praises unto the Lord. Pero lahat ng senaryong yon, they remained faithful and they received their miracles. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, hindi man sila nangamoy usok. They danced in fire. Si Daniel, walang leyon ang nagpalitaw ng ngipin, ni isang galos wala. Si Paul, pagkatapos mag and worship, chains fell off. The doors were opened, nakalaya sila. They persevered in faith, and they received their miracle. Kapatid, you wanna receive yours? Persevere in faith. If your faith is authentic, you will persevere until your last penny, until your last drop of strength, until your very last breath. Persevere in faith until you receive your miracle. Persevere in faith until victory, success, and overflow come into your life. Ngayong umagang to, no? we will make a commitment through worship. Nasa inyo, gusto niyo umupo, tumayo, it's up to you. Can we just tell God, Lord, no matter what, ano mang nakikita ng mga mata ko, mananampalataya ako sa'yo. I will remain faithful. I will keep singing your praise. I will keep singing of your goodness. Kahit walang nakikita ng dahilan ang mga mata ko. Because I live not by sight, not by feelings, but by faith. Hallelujah. Shall we all bow down and worship the Lord? Thank you for joining us. If you enjoyed this message, take a minute to like and share this video and page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, mention your friends and loved ones. And if this ministry greatly impacted and touched you and you would like to partner with us, you may check the following accounts on the screen. Thank you for watching and see you again on our next video.